Hello dear friends, welcome back. In our first video we explored the incredible science-based benefits of sulforaphane from your brain to your blood sugar. But now we are tackling the topic that generates the most interest and excitement. Sulforaphane and cancer. What is our plan? First we will cover, cover preclinical studies. Then we will focus on human studies uh, for cancer prevention and cancer treatment. So, let's get started. In laboratory studies, sulforaphane doesn't just have one anti-cancer trick. It has a whole toolkit. First of all, it's a detoxifier. You remember NRF2 pathway? By activating it, sulforaphane ramps up our body um, phase 2 detoxifying enzymes. This helps us to eliminate and neutralize uh, uh, pot uh, potential carcinogens, the substances that cause cancer, before it can damage uh, our DNA and cause mutations. Also, sulforaphane is a, an HDAC inhibitor. In um, simple terms, uh, it can reactivate tumor suppressor genes that uh, break uh, their cancer growth. And uh, these genes are often silenced in cancer. That's why our purpose is to reactivate them. Next, it is also an apoptosis inducer, meaning it uh, promotes self-killing of cells, which is also usually blocked in cancer. Cancer cells don't like to self-kill themselves. Also, we know that uh, uh, sulforaphane may interact with the processes that uh, cancer uses to spread and metastasize. That means it has a potential anti-metastatic um, effects. But what about human evidence? Uh, here you can see, uh, this is cancer prevention for now. For now. Um, this is um, this area of cancer prevention is uh, where we have some of the most compelling human data. The focus is not on curing existing cancer, but on preventing it uh, or stopping its progression uh, in the earlier stages or in precancerous lesions. For example, we know that uh, stomach cancer is connected to Helicobacter pylori that lives in the stomach and causes uh, chronic inflammation. We mentioned this in uh, the first part of the video, but it's crucial here. Human trials like one in Japan have shown that consuming broccoli sprouts can significantly reduce helicobacter colonization and associated uh, stomach inflammation. This suggests a direct role of sulforaphane in reducing uh, a key cancer risk factor. In this investigation, they used broccoli sprouts, 70 grams of fresh broccoli sprouts per day for two months. Next, as the detoxifier, uh, we um, know that uh, there are, the mold, mold may be very dangerous because it will produce toxins. One of the most uh, famous uh, is uh, aflatoxin. And uh, in some uh, high-risk areas where there is a lot of such a mold that produces this aflatoxin, um, it's a big deal because this toxin is um, damaging liver and uh, this chronic damage, it can cause liver, even li liver failure. And chronic damage may cause uh, uh, liver cancer. And uh, sulforaphane uh, dramatically increased the excretion of this toxin from the body, suggesting it's uh, reduced uh, uh, carcinogenic burden. Here they used broccoli sprout beverage. It's a um, powder of sprouts uh, dissolved in water. Now, perhaps the most direct evidence uh, comes from a study on people at high risk for head and neck cancer recurrence and participants who took broccoli extract developed fewer precancerous oral lesions than a placebo group. This is a huge deal. It's direct, measurable impact on precancerous conditions in humans. And uh, the dosage was uh, 200 micromole of uh, glucorophanin 
daily for several months. What about prostate cancer? Uh, this is the very sensitive and complex area. Uh, using sulforaphane as a complementary therapy for cancer. Uh, the goal here is not to replace chemo or, re or radiation therapy, but to see if it can make them more effective and protect healthy tissues. Uh, in prostate cancer there were several human uh, trials and uh, a key study gave men with recurrent prostate cancer a broccoli sprout extract. The results showed that the treatment significantly reduced the rate of PSA doubling. Um, prostate cancer will produce this PSA and the more cancer in the body, uh, the more PSA will be produced. Uh, meaning that the faster the tumor grows, the faster the levels of PSA will grow. And we have this indicator uh, that is called PSA doubling time. For example, it was uh, uh, 3 and then it became 6 and how fast it happens. And here we see that uh, intake of uh, sulforaphane or broccoli sprouts could slow down this increase, meaning that uh, potentially sulforaphane can slow down prostate cancer growth. The dosage was 200 micromol uh, for uh, six months. Because sulforaphane is excreted predominantly in urine, uh, this supports the potential role of uh, this substance in preventing uh, bladder cancer, especially with, uh, in people who are at risk of this cancer, who works with uh, aniline dyes or uh, smokers, for example. That's why it's not a bad choice to add uh, broccoli sprouts into the diet. What about pancreatic cancer? A fascinating 2017 pilot study uh, gave pancreatic cancer patients a broccoli sprout extract alongside chemotherapy. The researchers made a crucial observation that sulforaphane accumulated specifically in tumor tissue, not the healthy one. Sulforaphane selectively targets pancreatic cancer stem cells. The dosages were from 90 to 180 micromole of glucorophanin daily. And one more aspect is, of course, protection from toxicity. Preclinical studies uh, strongly suggest that sulforaphane can uh, protect healthy cells from damaging side effects of therapies like radiation. But we still need direct human trials to see if it, if, uh, it will also protect cancer cells from radiation. That is the uh, big uh, aspect uh, that we need to research. But in general, it could help to uh, improve the quality of life uh, during such treatment. The science is promising, but this is not a magic bullet. It's more about prevention and support. The strongest evidence is um, for cancer prevention and modulating early stages. And it's not a proven standalone treatment for advanced cancer. The doses used in many studies are high and equivalent to eating pounds of broccoli daily, which is why uh, concentrated uh, supplements were used. More is not always better, and uh, the ideal dose for different types of cancer is uh, still to be determined. And, uh, of course, uh, interaction with the therapy is also an important point. So, if somebody is undergoing uh, cancer treatment, uh, he must consult his doctor about any supplements, including sulforaphane, because there is some theoretical risk uh, that it may interfere with uh, treatment. In general, it's uh, uh, safer to take uh, not a supplements, but to, to take not supplements, but to include it into your food. For example, eating uh, broccoli sprouts. So, the human evidence uh, paints a picture of a substance that uh, can help our body to uh, get rid of toxins, cancerogens, slow the progression of precancerous lesions, and potentially work alongside conventional uh, therapies in a supportive way. The future lies uh, in more robust human trials to pinpoint exact dosages, identify which cancers are more sensitive to sulforaphane, and fully understand their interactions. That's why for now it's safer again to just to include the broccoli sprouts into the food.
putting the doses into perspective, food versus supplement, one serving of mature broccoli, 100 grams, contains from 20 to 60 micromoles of uh, glucoraphanin. Again, this is a precursor of sulforaphane. And if we are talking about broccoli sprouts, 100 grams of sprouts contains 600 to uh, 1.2 thousand micromole. That is the amazing difference. That's why if you are if you want more sulforaphane, you should choose sprouts. Dear friends, I hope that was useful for you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing this video, and thanks to everyone who supports this channel. You can see their names and the screen. I wish you good luck, have a good day, good health, and goodbye. Don't be